Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What are some keys to maintaining remembrance and turning to Allah during challenging times? Maintaining remembrance and turning to Allah during cha- challenging times uh, makes us call to mind several factors that are uh, prevalent in our religion. Firstly, consistent prayer. To remain firm upon your salah should not be underestimated because this is something we do all the time. So we look beyond the significance of the prayer. Whereas the prayer is the pillar of the, the worship life of a believer. This teaches us consistency. And for as long as we are steadfast in our prayers, meaning we pray every single day, every single prayer, and in its prescribed time slot, this will ensure that we have the minimum requirement of consistency that Allah Ta'ala wants from us, and that Allah demands from us. Secondly, it is it is imperative for a believer to have a connection with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah. Because the remembrance of Allah is the cure for the diseases of the heart. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cure for negligence and heedlessness, ghafla. And if we don't guard against heedlessness or ghafla, this will inevitably lead us to sin, ma'asi. So dhikr keeps the shaitan away, dhikr keeps heedlessness away, and dhikr keeps us connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with a connection to Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, we will find that consistency becomes second nature. Consistency becomes easy um, to the point where it requires no significant effort. Then connected to what we stated, if you pair up these uh, elements and you find that you can actually facilitate a program for yourself. If you're looking for a place to start, you know, you want to turn your life around, you want to develop a relationship with your Creator, Azza wa Jal, start with what Allah Ta'ala had started. Start with your prayer. Focus on fixing your prayer, perfecting your prayer. And then you can grow from that point onwards. You can connect a particular prayer with an act of worship. For example, you can commit that after Fajr, you're going to be sitting for 10 minutes and making dhikr. So now, not only have you incorporated the five daily prayers, but you've also connected an additional act of worship, which is remembering Allah, and you've made it easy for yourself to do so because it's connected to something that you are already going to be doing because the, the religion of Islam had, had, had facilitated that for you. Another element of keeping consistent with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning to Him in challenging times is to have a way to receive guidance from Allah. Uh, there's, one, there's one side of the relationship where we beg Allah for guidance. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, guide me. Show us the way. But along with that supplication, we should also go to the source because the guidance that we seek is not something hidden from us, something far removed from us. The guidance that we seek has been given to us, and the guidance is in the Quran. Alif Lamim, Dalik al Kitabu, La Rayba fi, Fihi Hudal lil Muttaqin. The opening up of the Quran, you see Surah Al Fatiha, and then immediately Surah Al Baqarah, the first page after the opening ayah, the Huruf al Muqatta'at, Allah says, This is the book, there's absolutely no doubt in it, and in it there's guidance for those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to the Qur'an in times of difficulty, in challenging times. And when we say turn to the Qur'an, turn to the Qur'an in every sense of the word. Listen to it, recite it, memorize it. But if you really want to receive guidance from it, then you cannot suffice yourself with only the mechanical and ritualistic interaction of the Qur'an. In other words, you cannot limit the Qur'an to only its recitation without understanding. There's benefit in it, yes, But for the Qur'an to be a book of guidance, you need to engage with the Qur'an in the form of a guiding manual for life. And in this sense, it is necessary for a believer who is keen on turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of ways and through challenging times to always resort to the Qur'an as their guide. And ask yourself, what is it that Allah wants me to know today? The way to engage in the Qur'an is to learn the Arabic language, yes, but while you are on your way there, inshallah ta'ala, may Allah make it easy for all of us, is to also make sure that you have a constant connection to the, the study of the Qur'an. Have a tafsir class that you attend. Have a 
course of tafsir that you attend. Make sure you go through the Quran from cover to cover in great detail at least once in your lifetime and then regularly revise. There's some brilliant opportunities for that on seekersguidance.org and uh, you can find our you can find our courses available for free on seekersguidance.org including a coverage of the Quran from cover to cover with uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim Riyasat so do uh, check that out on seekers guidance bi idnillahi ta'ala and then finally in challenging times it's also very necessary for us to adopt tawakkul right trust in our creator azza wa jal trust in his plan trust in his wisdom trust in his divine decisions and وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whosoever places their trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is enough for them. And we should also combat our understanding of trust. You know, many people, they misunderstand this, this concept of tawakkul as in, I relinquish all responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is in charge. I have no say. I'm going to sit back, relax, and wait for the outcome. No, that's not tawakkul. That is false trust that's called tawakul, where we, uh, we pretend to be placing our trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, tawakul is to tie your camel and place your trust in Allah. In other words, do my best and have trust that Allah ta'ala will take care of the rest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah